Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And I personally don't want to waste a single second, so let's get straight into this first post by user slash excellent tone. At work, we had an outgoing mailbox that handled postal mail as well as internal. You just dropped your envelope in there, the mailroom picked it up when they collected mail every afternoon, and everything was fine. Everyone did this. I used it for my Menards rebates, people used it for greeting cards, bills, anything you still needed to send by mail. My landlady, although very kind, is about a thousand years old. Because of that, she doesn't have a website or even a PayPal account and requires us to mail her a check for rent every month. Enter Busybody. Busybody apparently had too much time and too little sense, and liked to harass anyone she had authority over at any opportunity. One month, she saw me drop my rent check in the outgoing mail bin, and was at my desk faster than I thought a 300 pound lady could even move. The rules say the mailbox is only for work-related mail. Why are you sending this letter to someone in the next suburb? Um, because I always do? Because I have for a year and a half now, and no one said anything? Well, it's against the rules. No personal mail. So she waddled me over to her desk, where she already had the internal company website pulled up to the page on the mailroom. Sure enough, no personal mail. Well, thank you for letting me know, busybody. Could you send me the link to this page? Gladly. It was sitting in my inbox by the time I got back. Link to the webpage. This constitutes a written warning and a threat of a write-up if I was caught breaking company policy again. It was obvious what I had to do. From then on, I watched the mailbox like a hawk. Anytime I saw a personal letter in there, I pulled it out and placed it on the sender's desk along with a copy of Busybody's email, with her name and company email splashed across the header. In fact, I was so worried about this flagrant violation of the rules that after a couple of days, I decided to start checking the mailboxes in other departments, and then on other floors. I wouldn't want anyone else making such an embarrassing mistake after all. About a week later, the company's website was updated to clarify that personal mail was allowed if under blah blah size and weight. No one said a word to me, but I'm told Busybody got a talking to. All I know is she gave me the stink eye every time she saw me until she transferred out of the department. And oh my god, people who waste time enforcing stupid rules just annoy me so much. Eventually though, it normally does come back to bite them in the bum, and this did happen to this woman. And here's our next post by user slash monsterchick16. Okay, so from where I'm from, there's two times a year when you can put anything you want to throw out on your front lawn and it'll be picked up at no cost. I don't know if it's just my home state that does this, or if most states or even countries do this. Where I'm living now, used to but doesn't anymore, but that's a basic description of what happens. For kids, it's like Christmas, because it's common to go to others' trash piles and grab anything you like. One man's trash is another man's treasure, am I right? I've gotten a desk chair, roller skates, toys, DVD players, a mini trampoline, and other things. It's always fun to see what you can find. And now, onto the story and the malicious compliance. So when I was 12, my mother sold a lot of our things, TVs and such included, and put anything we couldn't or didn't want to sell in storage while she dragged us all over the country for her book tour. We were homeless, living on the road, and all that. Anyway, when we finally returned to our home state, we moved into a rental house in a city four hours from where we used to live. And then the unpacking happened. My mother had sold the family TV and so stole mine, which I'd purposely kept and made that the family TV. I was understandably annoyed since it wasn't my fault that she'd sold their TV. Why'd I have to give up one of the only big items I'd been allowed to keep? Months went by and then, then that glorious day came and my siblings and I were allowed to wander the nearby streets looking for hidden treasures. That year, everyone had been transitioning from analog TVs to digital ones, so the streets were filled with analog TVs that were being thrown out. Almost every house had one on their lawn. I took my siblings home after some successful treasure hunting and begged my mother to help me bring one of the TVs home. 
It would have taken very little effort on her part to get the car and drive it to one of the TVs that I had walked to and bring it home. We were both used to some heavy lifting, so between the two of us, it would have been a piece of cake and free. But no, she refused. If you want a TV so bad, then you have to carry one back to the house by yourself. It wasn't a challenge or a tone that was in any way positive or encouraging. It was a tone that said, I won't help you and you can't do it alone, so just give up. With a hint of smugness, waiting for me to dejectedly walk to my room in defeat. No way. Fine, just make sure to hold the door open for me when I get back so that I can get inside. I turned and left, determined to prove her wrong. Yeah, sure you will, she replied sarcastically. So I went front lawn to front lawn looking for a good TV. There were many that were too big to carry and others that didn't have any good way for a single person to grip them and would slip when I tried to pick them up. Eventually though, about two blocks from our house, I found a still relatively large TV with two grip holds and was square enough for me to pick up. I lugged that thing, arms protesting and back aching the whole way home and set it down right in front of the door. Mom, come hold the front door open for me. The look on her face was priceless. She just stood there dumbfounded before I reminded her that I'd only done what she'd told me to do. I brought that baby inside and placed it on my TV stand where I proceeded to hook up my DVD player and give my mother a poop eating grin when I turned it on. I had vet TV for years until I eventually had to put it out on my own front lawn when I got a digital TV of my own. The funny thing about this though is that the TV had to be moved a couple of times while I owned it, moving house and the like, and I couldn't lift it again. It was too heavy, and even with my mother helping, we both struggled to get it out of the house. Yet, 12 year old me had managed to lift it all by herself. The desire to maliciously comply and spite my mother gave me a momentary burst of super strength in order to accomplish my task. I still look back and laugh at how my stubbornness and spite empowered me like that. Honestly, it's amazing the things we can sometimes achieve out of spite, and this post really goes to show us. And here's our next post by user slash sidewink. I work for a bank that I won't name. Part of my job is largely opening new accounts. We have little mini scanners on our desks. When we open an account, ideally we would open our program, feed the ID into the scanner, and it would automatically take the information from the ID and input it into the computer. Now, unfortunately, our company won't pay for the nice scanners. The scanners we have are garbage and don't properly scan things, so usually we manually enter the information and use the printer to copy the ID. We've been doing this for over a year now. Cut to the first quarter of 2020. Corporate sends out a harshly worded email that from here on out, they will not accept our printer copies of the ID. And we must use the desk scanners. I call tech, they do some stuff with my scanner and tell me it's working. A few hours later, I start opening accounts and the scanner still isn't working. I'm not one to turn customers away, so I did it the manual way. I call tech after and they tell me it's a flaw of the scanners, that the more expensive model is almost perfect, but corporate won't shell out for them. Sucks, but tech tries to fix it and get off the line. This happens for the next five accounts I have that day and for the next week. I call tech, there's a ton of tickets, the issue persists, but I won't turn away customers and keep doing it manually. I get an email from corporate, three days ago, saying that I immediately need to start using the desk scanner and stop entering information manually. I'm being audited, my accounts are being examined, and if I keep being insubordinate, I might get written up. I call the department and say, hey, our scanners don't work, I can't use it. They basically tell me, tough luck. So I stop opening accounts manually. For the last few days, if someone comes in to open an account, I try to scan their ID, and if the scanner doesn't work, I basically tell them, sorry, they won't let me open it manually, and give them the corporate complaint line. I turn away countless people. They're irritated, it's a mess. Guess who got the notification today that we're getting the better scanners in on Monday? And I really like the corporate logic. 
Let's give our employees hardware that doesn't work, then tell them that they have to use the hardware that doesn't work and write them up if they don't use it, and then be surprised when not a single account is opened. That is a big brain moment. And here's our next post by user slash Aquavantus. I, 23 female, decided to take a year off university to earn some money and have some fun before my last year as a student. I found a job in retail fairly easy as I've worked in stores ever since I was old enough to work. My boss was thrilled to find someone with experience who could improve her small store. My job was great at first, despite everything in the store needing to be done manually. We have to write receipts down by hand, make a list of articles in the store every month. We don't even have a clear schedule of work. The boss would just call us and ask us if we can work the next day. My coworker and I weren't bothered about any of it, except the schedule. She's going to university this year and not knowing when she works is seriously messing up her progress in class. My boss would also get really upset and mad whenever we told her we couldn't work the next day due to other plans. A few weeks into the job, I decided to fix that. I made a spreadsheet which she could use to plan our work hours, like any other company I worked for in advance. We also gave her our schedule three weeks in advance so she could build and plan around it. Her response? This doesn't work for me. What if something comes in between and the person who's supposed to work doesn't show? I tried to explain that if that were to occur, the other will just try to show up. But she was having none of it, insisting that us learning whether we worked or not the next day was just fine. It wasn't, but okay. I didn't want my work to go to waste, so I altered the sheet to work as something that counts our monthly hours at work, since that also had to be done by hand and it was unnecessary time wasted. I'm sure most of us keep track of hours spent at work, just in case. I tried improving some other things in the store, like building a database for articles we have, so we wouldn't have to count everything every month or every time she had to order something new. She sternly told me to delete everything I did because she doesn't like the look of it. Side note, this is kind of biting her in the butt right now because some providers are now giving her a smack about the way she reports items sold at the end of each month. The database she made me delete and the way it generated the list of items in storage is exactly what they want from her from now on. Skip to a few days ago. A few months into the job and I'm tired of her attitude. I try to help her improve the store, show motivation, present my ideas, and she shuts everything down and we stay in the same cycle of work that wouldn't be needed if she just take up some of my ideas. My coworker has already quit. She's now in the store purely for emergencies until a replacement is found. My boss comes into the store and tells me it's payday. Sweet. She usually wants us to count the hours by ourselves and then compares with what she counted. But apparently she was in a bad mood that particular day and wanted me to go through everything again. We have to go over your hours for the previous month. I'd like to count them now and tell me how many you had. Okay, I already have them counted, so you can just tell me how many you got and we can check if it matches with mine. I pull up the sheet, which both coworker and I update daily, so we don't have to do this at the end of each month. She apparently didn't like that response, since she loves doing everything by hand so much. She came barreling from her office and into the store, yelling at me how I shouldn't be checking the spreadsheet of my hour count, and that I have to delete it from the computer immediately and to never try one of my improvements ever again. I, having been tired of this, just raised my eyebrows and did exactly as she said. I deleted the spreadsheet. Boss, now satisfied. Good, now I'd like you to count and report the hours you worked last month. Alright. I pulled my phone out and showed her the same exact spreadsheet. Except this one also calculated how much I should be getting paid for my time. I counted X hours, which means I should be getting paid Y euros. She was absolutely livid with me. She was banging and throwing things in her office before she came back and handed me my hard-earned cash. Bonus, that was also the day I decided I no longer wanted to work for her due to her abusive behaviour to both me and my co-worker. I informed her of my decision the next day and now she has to find two replacements. I take some pity on her and jump in when she really needs someone, but I am otherwise free from her clutches. 
And honestly, this just seems like an awful way to run a business to me. Very outdated, very time consuming, and I won't be surprised if this woman's store goes under very, very soon. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little video as much as I did. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for Reddit videos every second day. But with that said, that is it from me. I hope you all enjoyed, and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.